cool, right? This plaster of Paris, was water of crystallization, washing soda, yes. baking. Okay. Yes. So today I will start with this because this part I already completed. This one, the plaster of Paris one. Uh, it is obtained of just. It is obtained by what? It is obtained by heating gypsum. Your gypsum formula is this one, CSO4.1 uh, half H2O at 373 Kelvin. And at this temperature, your gypsum loses water molecule. And it forms what? It forms plaster of Paris. Because plaster of Paris is what? Is hard. You know? And if you will heat gypsum more than 373 Kelvin, then what will happen? It will, Then what will happen? It will lose the property of hardening. Okay, because plaster of Paris is hard, right? In fracture, we use this plaster of Paris and these things. And what is this? Plaster of Paris is a white powder. And if we will mix plaster of Paris with water, then what will happen? It will give a hard solid substance, which is a gypsum. Now, what is next? Next is laboratory preparation um, of some salts. First is iron. Now, okay, so iron, iron. Of this, this, this is iron. Formula of a uh, formula of iron chloride is huh? Rudra, what is the formula of iron chloride? FeCl. FeCl two. F yeah, FeCl two. FeCl two or FeCl three. Uh, was it iron three or iron two? Iron three. Oh, ma'am, then FeCl three. Yes, FeCl three. So, uh, when it will break with water. This FeCl3 will break with water, then what it will produce? It will produce H plus and OH minus, right? Because water is H2O. So it will produce uh, huh, H plus and OH minus. Then what will happen? It will give only, huh, it will give this also. And uh, with this, it will give Fe3 plus and Cl minus. Minus means this minus one only, okay? So when this iron chloride will break with the help of water break with the water then it will form this h plus and oh minus and uh, this also it will form fec plus and uh, sorry huh, fe3 plus and cl minus then how to how to prepare this iron chloride do you know preparation of iron chloride no no ma'am why no okay it's okay okay so what is the preparation here First, we took a container. Okay, let's say this is mm, let's say this is my container. Okay, and this container is full of con concentrated H two S O four. Okay, so this container is full of H two S O four, and here let's say this is like one pipe, and here I am taking chlorine. Okay, Cl two is taken. From outside this is outside pipe and from outside pipe i'm taking this chlorine then what will happen uh chlorine is taken as a supply okay so after reaction what will happen your moisture will get removed so see here i am putting chlorine uh in h2so4 hana? in concentrated h2so4 so what will happen your the moisture which is present in chlorine that will remove so see here like it if it will pass it from this and if it will mix in this h2so4 then what will happen see these tiny particles is what is your is what hmm? now okay now again this thing first let me make diagram like this like this like this this is what do you know what is this the spring type thing uh, no ma'am okay now this whole thing is the preparation now see here here uh, we took one container and in this container there is a pure concentrated h2so4 and here chlorine is taken from outside as a supply okay so there's a moisture which is present in your chlorine in your chlorine what is present in your chlorine moisture is present so after reaction what will happen after this chlorine will react with h2so4 then what will happen your moisture will be removed Okay, so the chlorine, which is having some amount of moisture, after reaction, what will happen? Your moisture will remove. So to remove this, we pass it through this this concentrated H2SO4. If we'll pass this chlorine with, with concentrated H2SO4, then your moisture will remove. Now what will happen? Uh, 
now from here your moisture is removed okay so here what will happen here your dry chlorine will pass this is what this is your dry cl2 and this thing is what this thing is full of moisture so after removing moisture with uh, with the reaction or uh, uh, with the reaction with this h2so4 uh, after removing what after removing moisture it will pass it through this this supply pipeline okay so this the chlorine dry chlorine will pass it through because you obviously your moisture is removed so only the dry chlorine is left ha huh. then dry chlorine will pass through iron fire see iron wire sorry this is what this is your iron okay so your dry chlorine will pass it through iron wire and when it will heat and what will happen here we will give large amount of heat okay here what we will give we will give will give large amount of heat then what will happen chlorine and i okay okay see so here first of all your chlorine full of moisture after removing moisture in this pipeline uh, your dry chlorine is there so this dry chlorine will pass it through iron okay so if in this chamber if in this chamber we will give a large amount of heat then what will happen your your chlorine and iron will react okay your chlorine and iron will react so after the reaction of chlorine and iron then what will happen then we get what then we will get a iron chloride okay after reaction okay so after the reaction of chlorine and iron we will get what we will get we will get iron chloride so the reaction the chemical reaction will be 2 fe plus 3 cl2 we will get 2 fe cl3 this is the reaction okay so this is what this fe cl3 is highly deli deliquescent now what is the meaning of that do you know do you know no no so this means that it will absorb moisture from atmosphere and it will dissolve in that see what will happen e it will absorb moisture it will absorb it will absorb moisture it will absorb moisture from where from atmosphere from atm i am writing it's not like okay let me write full from atmosphere and it will dissolve in that it will dissolve in that now see here in this fecl3 it's not fully anhydrous okay now what is the meaning of anhydrous see this your fecl3 is not fully anhydrous it will absorb some amount of moisture then what will happen in one tube see this is my another tube hai na this is my another tube so here in one tube we put fused calcium chloride we put what we put fused calcium chloride so that the moisture which is present in that fecl3 na then what will then what will happen it will absorb all the moisture and we will get a solid fe solid fecl3 now let me ex explain it again see here first of all so let me explain it again first of all here for the iron chloride 3 first we took one container okay in that container we put what we put concentrated h2so4 then what will happen and from outside we are supplying chlorine okay so after the reaction of this chlorine and your h2so4 what will happen the moisture which is present in your chlorine it will get removed theek hai after it will get removed then what will happen this the removed particle will pass it through this supply chain so this supply chain is consist of dry chlorine eh? because your moisture is removed uh, with the reaction of these two so after that it will pass it through means dry chlorine will pass it through this supply chain so now what will happen this uh, dry chlorine will come to this chamber this chamber okay this one this chamber and here your iron is there so okay so iron and your chlorine and we will give a large amount of heat so if we will give a large amount of heat then what will happen your chloride and iron will react after the reaction what will happen we will get a iron chloride theek hai fecl3 is nothing but fe is iron and your cl is chlorine so we will get a iron chloride and this is the reaction where is it where is it ha ah, 
yes this is the reaction 2fe plus 3cl2 will give 2fecl3 and again what will happen this fecl3 is also not fully anhydrous some uh, some moisture is present in this in this fecl3 okay after all these reactions again some small amount of moisture is present then what will happen then we will again pass this this fecl3 with this tube okay in this tube there is what there is fused calcium chloride now what is the use of this fused fused calcium chloride hmm ha huh. what is the use of this it will absorb all the moisture which is present so after absorbing all the moisture we'll get a solid iron chloride okay hmm now you explain me this whole preparation come on fast tell me and this whole thing ha huh. whole thing come on start first and so first you have um, chl uh, chlorine coming in from one of the pipe to oh. and there's um, H2SO4 mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. beaker that's a beaker mm -hmm. and um, they react and they come together and then it goes through the pipe and over which ha uh, mm -hmm. yeah. the chlorine and H2SO4 will react what will happen after reaction your moisture is removed ha right? yeah okay and um, uh using the heat um ha huh, first this one the so after the moisture is removed so in this uh, pipeline your dry chlorine will pass yeah okay huh. next then uh heat is passed through the iron coils the iron coils mm -hmm. and then it's passed through the fused chamber ha huh. so okay good so first here your uh chlorine is there na so in this chamber your iron is also present and uh, let's say here is iron and from this side your chlorine is coming and here uh, we are giving a large amount of heat so obviously these both will react right so if these both will react then it will form a iron chloride because this is iron and this one is chlorine so this will react and it will form iron chloride but after the reaction this is my reaction after the reaction also some small amount of moisture is present then what we will do then again we will pass it through this one and here your fused calcium chloride is present the use of this fused calcium chloride is that it will remove all the small amount or whatever large amount of moisture is present and then what we will get we will get a solid iron chloride okay yes okay any doubt no okay one more part see if if we take one if we take if one glass of water let's say this is my glass okay here is what here is my water h2 okay and we put a salt in it let's say we are putting a salt in it then what will happen obviously it will dissolve right ha huh. it will what it will dissolve and let's say if i want my salt again so what we will do we will give a we will we will give a lots of heat ha huh. so if we will heat it then what will happen we'll get a salt back right okay so let me ask you one question the question is this that hydrated fecl3 your iron chloride on heating yes your uh, hydrated fecl3 on heating can give can give what can give anhydrous 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 fecl3 is this a statement true Virat, by seeing this exa this example, because if we are taking one glass which is full of salt, and if we we'll mix it, it will dissolve, right? And if we want my salt back, then what will happen? We'll give a large amount of it. So let's take uh, this question. See, here your hydrated FeCl3, here your iron chloride, and if we will heat this FeCl3, can we will uh, can it uh, hydrated FeCl3 on heating? can give this anhydrous fecl3 no huh no okay no how mm -hmm. what is anhydrous what is the meaning of anhydrous it means containing no water right so if we will heat fecl3 let's say here i am heating my fecl3 okay fecl3 dot 6h2o if i will heat this because this is hydrated you know so hydrated so dot 6h2 If we will heat this, then what will happen? On heating, can give an hydrous FeCl FeCl3 means containing no water. No, so the reaction will be uh, in the reactant side. It's what? Sorry, in the product side, it's what? Fe2O3 plus 9H2O. What is present? So how come 
these two examples are different right here on direct heating water is not removed in this particular formula uh, sorry in this particular question on direct heating on direct heating your water is on direct heating water is not removed just like in this example here in direct heating your water is removed hai na we uh, we left with only salt but in this hydrid fecl 3 if we will heat this so no we will get a water okay on direct heating this your water will not be removed now let's quickly go with this it is also called as ferric chloride okay iron chloride is also known as ferric chloride ha huh? because iron is fe so we can call it as ferric which is an industrial scale chemical compound when dissolved in water iron chloride undergoes hydrolysis and ev evolve heat okay when when dissolved with with sorry when dissolved in water it will it undergoes hydrolysis and evolve heat hai na hydrolysis is what okay when it will dissolve in water it will give h plus and oh minus and also evolve some heat which is an exothermic reaction now what is the preparation anhydrous anhydrous means uh, containing no water anhydrous iron chloride may be prepared by the union of the elements in this industrially iron chloride is prepared by the reaction of iron with chlorine here also we we see that iron is reacting with chlorine then only your reaction is formed see the reaction involved this so this and the this is same yes it is same now what is the procedure in a combustion tube thin wire of iron is placed okay this this is what this is a wire theek hai so your uh, thin wire wire of iron is placed initially dry chlorine gas is passed obviously dry chlorine will pass because your moisture is removed dry chlorine gas is passed through the combustion tube this is your combustion tube the com this is your combustion tube okay ct the combustion tube is slowly heated for a few minutes and dry chlorine gas is passed through it so it will heat for a few minutes and then what will happen your dry chlorine will pass through it the iron turns to be hot as a result of exothermic reaction the iron and, and the chlorine if we will give heat then it what will happen it the iron turns to be a hot so iron 3 chloride is formed which volatilizes and condenses in the receiver as brown scale but this part this part is clear right if at the last also your some moisture is remaining then uh, who will uh, who will absorb it the fused calcium chloride will absorb your remaining moisture and you will get a solid iron chloride okay so clear now yes ma'am okay this this is the short one quickly we will see this uh, zinc sulfate z and so for sulfate is so for it is an inorganic compound with the formula z and so for it is historically known as white vitriol okay so this zinc sulfate zinc is uh, zinc is white in color okay so this is known as white vitriol what is the preparation of the zinc sulfate zinc sulfate is produced by treating any zinc containing material with sulfuric acid um zinc sulfate is produced by treating any zinc containing material with sulfuric acid okay if we will treat zinc with sulfuric acid then what will happen your zinc sulfate will produce so here this is my iron and this is what this is my sulfuric acid if we are reacting uh, if we are ha huh, if we are reacting this then what we are getting we are getting iron sulfate okay iron sulfate and uh, hydrogen gas evolved hydrogen gas and here also if you are taking iron sulfate and water okay here iron sulfate iron sulfate and water then what we will get we will get a green vitriol so how we will prepare a zinc sulfate by uh, we have to do what zinc sulfate is produced if we will treat some any zinc with what any zinc with sulfuric acid okay what is the procedure the procedure for the preparation of iron 2 sulfate is same as zinc sulfate pale green crystal of hydrated iron sulfate is formed so after the reaction what will happen you will get a green type of vitriol okay firstly it was white vitriol after reaction will get a green vitriol now where just where is your iron 2 i am going to get this out okay so it's already 5 sorry ha ah, 455 okay so this much for today
okay we studied about this one rn3 chloride and uh, and the another one was 